Meanwhile, a school district in Wisconsin is considering a ban on, well, I guess you can call it start of another sort, candy and sodas and junk food sold in its vending machines during school hours. Critics of the idea say the school will lose thousands of dollars in money that is used for programs like class trips. My next guest isn't buying a word of it and says that all soda and junk food should be banned from all schools, period. With us now is anti-obesity advocate Mimi Rohn. Mimi, good to have you back. Thank you, Neil. Good to be here. The schools say that. You know, it's one thing for you to say, Mimi, pull the soda machines out, but we need the money. Well, first of all, the school district in Madison should be applauded. Any school that provides a safe haven from junk food should be applauded. The parents should stop fighting it and support it. All right, but it's the correct thing to do to stop your kids from eating this junk food, but that's my role as a parent. It's, I don't expect my school to do that, or should I? You know, uh, no offense to you, Neil, but we're failing as parents. Latest studies say that nearly half of all children will be overweight in the next five years. So who's the government or the school principal to play mom? I don't think that he or she is playing mom. I think that there's an opportunity for the school districts to provide a safe haven from junk food. They all want to create a safe environment where children can do their best learning. When we bring junk food into that equation, the best learning isn't happening. Well, let me ask you this. It wasn't too long ago that popcorn was considered junk food, right? There are a number of health food advocates who say, you know, popcorn's actually pretty good for you. But can, in other words, can you make sweeping indictments against food that you might not have, and you're, by the way, a very fit, beautiful woman, but that you can't make a subjective statement to a school or to kids at that school. Let's go back to the numbers. We know that children have a lesser life expectancy now than you or I, okay? We can't sit around and say, that's really sad. It's time to intervene. We have to do something. And I admire any principal, any superintendent who is willing to step in and say, let's do what it takes. Do you want the state to take care of you, though? I mean, it's one thing with seat belts and it's correct food, and then they don't like the way you maybe you're sitting on an airplane or they don't like the way you're walking too close to the curb on the street. Can't you see where this is going? I'm really comfortable with somebody intervening because I look at what's happening with children. As you know, an overweight adult is practically guaranteeing that his or her child would be overweight. A child who is overweight is almost always an overweight adult. We've got to I don't stop know, you this. Know, I'll tell you, Mimi, I've seen a lot of fat 95-year-olds. <laughs> We've got to do something to help kids. All right, you, know, I, you just said it. We got to do something. We parents, we family members, friends, sisters, brothers. I, I feel very uncomfortable with the governor, with the government, with the best intentions, saying, you know what, we're going to take over. I think what we're doing is asking parents to support school districts and say, let's give every child a fair chance at growing up to be a healthy adult. Let's okay. cre create the school day a day free of junk food. It's an every you child's ever best. You ever have any fun food? We'll talk about that all off right, the yeah, air. All right, all right. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Good seeing you again.